While Coco is an amazing film and definitely some of Pixar's best work in recent years, I have one major problem with it. Being how convenient it all is. Like, I can get on board with the whole there was a cursed guitar bringing Miguel to the land of the dead, but the fact that he somehow just runs into his family, literally, in under two minutes of getting there, and then once he runs away from his family, comes into contact with his long-lost great-great-grandfather within 42 seconds, albeit he didn't know it was his great-great-grandfather, but then from the moment he finds out, there's about a minute until he gets saved from Ernesto de la Cruz's sinkhole thing that's meant to be able to hold him with no supervision for at least the rest of the night, you know, to avoid Ernesto de la Cruz's huge secret getting revealed to the land of the living. I'm sorry, that is just too much convenience for one film. The land of the dead just isn't that small. There is no way he could just run into that many family members that easily. Except, what if he could? What if Pixar hit a reason why he kept running into his family members in plain sight the entire film? And what if that reason was Dante? <laughs> Dante. Dante is the reason. Okay, so as you'll remember... Oh, nice. I used the word remember. That means I can awkwardly laugh about how the whole film was about remembering and claim it was a pun. Dante travels with Miguel to the land of the dead. Somehow. To be fair, they do explain at the end that he was Nala Brihe all along after I spent my entire first viewing of the film scripting a video in my head about how he arrived in the land of the dead. But it's fine, though. No hard feelings, Pixar. Like, it did make up for it by giving a long, extensive explanation to what Alabrijes are. Oh, wait. You didn't do that. But it's fine. It's fine. Apparently, Alabrijes are spirit creatures. They guide souls on their journey. That's the only brief explanation we get. And while there's technically a long, rich Mexican history behind the existence of Alabrijes, it's not really relevant to this video, so... I'm not gonna go into it. What you need to know is that in this world Pixar created, Alabrijes are spirit creatures who guide people's souls. Also, it seems to be implied that some people have like a specific Alabrije that kind of has an attachment to them. Almost like a spirit animal, or if you let me speak your language, a Patronus. I kind of see it like how each person has a demon in Philip Pullman's His Dark Materials series. But a lot of you have probably never read these books, so don't know what that means. And it's also implied that not everyone has an Alabrije, so maybe that's just me. Maybe it's more of like an owner to pet relationship kind of thing. Either way, my point is that Dante is Miguel's Alabrije. And well, yeah, that's great and everything. I'm sure you're all wondering how this explains why Miguel keeps running into his family over and over and over again. And this is where things start to tie together and get interesting. So let me explain. As you'll know, in the story of Coco, Miguel gets taken on a crazy journey to the land of the dead before he actually dies because he steals a cursed guitar. And since Dante is an Alabrije, specifically Miguel's Alabrije, he is also there to guide Miguel's soul. Because, you know, that's what we're told Alabrije do. And since Miguel is still alive, his soul doesn't belong in the land of the dead, making it kind of Dante's mission to return his soul to the land of the living. Anyway, moving on, we find out the only way for his soul to return to where it belongs, he has to get a blessing from a family member, lifting the curse and preventing him from dying and remaining in the land of the dead. Meaning Dante, as his spirit guide, needs to bring him to his family. So what's his first action in the land of the dead? To run straight in the direction of Miguel's grandfather, Julio. Someone who can lift the curse and help Miguel return to the land of the living. But there's a problem, being that Julio and the rest of Miguel's family don't know how to return him to the land of the living, so have to head towards the Department of Family Reunion. And that's where we meet this guy, whose name I don't actually know. I don't think he has an official name, he's just referred to as Clerk in the script. So, uh, that gives me creative liberty to name him, right? Uh, I'm gonna call him Voldemort, cause, you know... I don't have a nose. I'm sorry, I hate myself for that. Anyway, Voldemort reveals to the Riveras the knowledge on how to lift the curse, that he somehow has documented in one of the books in his office. They lift the curse, Miguel returns to the land of the living, and Dante has achieved his mission of returning Miguel's soul to where it belongs. Roll crit. Except, Miguel comes back because he doesn't want the curse to be lifted by a melder who wants to ban him from music within the curse. Which is something she's allowed to do, apparently, because... That's how Land of the Dead curses work. It's like any rational person, he runs off and sets out to find his great-great-grandfather, who he believes is Ernesto de la Cruz. Spoiler alert, it isn't. But before he gets anywhere, he chases Dante outside an interrogation room containing Hector. Miguel's actual great-great-grandfather, who can actually lift the curse. And while yes, for an average viewer, even including myself until my last viewing, this just seems like overly convenient plot convenience. But no. Now I realize that Dante isn't plot convenience, but a very clever plot device written in by the creator of the film. And when you watch the film really paying attention to it, it is really well done. And it doesn't end there with the in our faces use of the Dante plot device. When Miguel runs away from Hector after the talent show to head to Ernesto de la Cruz's house, Dante barks and tugs on his clothes as he tries to stop him from going. Leaving us as the audience wondering why he was so desperate for Miguel to stay with Hector. Until you consider the fact that Dante wants to guide Miguel's soul back to the land of the living, and Hector is the one who can lift the curse, not Ernesto. And in terms of symbolism, the fact the entire 
Maya, Miguel, and Ernesto scene where they're just having family bonding time, Dante isn't there, basically giving away that they're not related. And Dante doesn't return until he finds them in Ernesto de la Cruz's pit. Which once again would seem like major plot convenience because how on earth would he have been able to find them? They're literally in the middle of nowhere. Except Dante is a spirit creature with the intention of guiding Miguel's soul. Meaning it's completely plausible for him to know where Miguel is and therefore lead Pepita there. Honestly, the whole Dante becoming an Alabrije scene might be the most important scene in Coco. It resolves every single piece of plot convenience in the entire film. Nearly. It just works, and that should be it for the video. I could tell you guys to like and subscribe and get on with my day, but there's one inconsistency. One small inconsistency. And it ruins everything. Why does Dante guide Miguel away from Hector when he's talking to the costume designer, Cecilia? Like, yeah, I get the creators of the film wanted to include Mexican celebrity Frida Kahlo, and this was the best way to throw her in. I guess the scene does reveal a bit about Hector's backstory, specifically his death, which becomes a lot more important later, but it just doesn't fit in with Dante's role as a spirit guide. If he truly is trying to guide Miguel's soul back to the land of the living and in turn needs him to be with his family, why would he lead him away from his great-great-grandfather? And this had me really stumped. Like, really bad. Until the other day when I was reading up on Frida Kahlo because... That's the kind of entertaining stuff I get up to. Because as I'm sure you'll know, or you won't, and if so, you're about to learn something new, she was a famous artist in the 20th century. And while I was reading about her, I came to learn she was married to a man called Diego Rivera. Rivera. Hmm, that's interesting. You are a Rivera. But no, he's a real person and they're all fictional characters, so they can't be related, right? Except they've made an effort to include these real people in this fictional world. And then the writers who clearly have an extensive knowledge on Mexican history and celebrities still decided to call the main family the Riveras? Why would they choose that name in particular unless they were trying to tell us something? And if theoretically Miguel was a descendant of Diego Rivera, let's say he was Hector's brother because that fits up pretty nicely for the timeline. Making him Miguel's great 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 uncle. Wouldn't that make Diego's wife Frida Kahlo Miguel's family? Meaning she could also free him of the curse and send him back to the land of the living? And therefore it would make complete sense for Dante to leave Miguel to her since he wasn't really getting anywhere close to working out Hector was actually his great great grandfather, was he? Now I'm just being crazy. There's no way a real world person could be related to a fictional character even if that real world person is in that fictional film. That's just ridiculous. Except it's not. It's completely intentional from the creators of this film who want us to work this out. And if you don't believe me, let me remind you of Frida's very first line in the entire film. <gasps> oh, the mighty Sholo dog, guide of wandering spirits. Mm, in whose spirit have you guided to me? Now, if you ask me, that's a very strange line to put in there. She and the creators of the film make it very clear that Dante has guided Miguel to her for some apparent reason. I don't think he's a spirit guide. Ah, uh, ah, uh, ah. Uh. The alebrijes of this world can take many forms. They are as mysterious as they are powerful. Like, why else would this line be in the film other than hinting at the fact there's a possibility they could be related? And adding that to the fact it fits perfectly with Dante's character as a spirit guide, not even to mention that Diego Rivera was born in Guanajuato, a place where Pixar's production team visited twice during the production of the film, and Lee Uncrick, the director, said in an interview with Deadline, it had a big impact on us, and we ended up using that as a jumping off point for the feeling of the land of the dead. And I don't know about you, but it would just fit up so nicely if Frida Kahlo was in fact Miguel's great, great, great aunt. And because of all that, I think Dante is the real reason Miguel made it home and reunited Miguel's family and therefore is the true hero of Coco. Thanks for watching this video all the way to the end. If you enjoyed it, make sure to leave a like and go follow me on Twitter and Instagram because I need followers. So at Gorman Seamus and at Seamus Gorman 4. You can also subscribe to my channel by clicking here. You can watch another video by clicking here. You can check out my merch here and in the description down below. That's all I've got for you guys today. I'll see you all next time. Okay, so I've just finished editing. I haven't made an end credit scene. So, uh, Sam, do you have anything to say? Arriba!